This is the second part in a series where I'm living in the nether and I can't ever leave. And I think by now I've proven that it's possible to survive in this world, but surviving isn't enough for me. My four long-term challenges are still far in the distance, and if I want to make any progress towards completing them, I'm really going to need to explore some more. That shouldn't be an issue though. I've got decent equipment, and I think I'm starting to get the hang of surviving here. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, buddy. Hey. Okay. I need you to shut the fuck up. <laughs> I started the recording with an exciting new addition to my house. A respawn anchor. It's not essential since my house is really close to spawn, but it's still a nice convenience. Also, it's sick as hell. Immediately after this, I, uh, fucked up the recording? Okay, not like that. I tabbed out to mess with my data packs, and when I went back to the game, OBS apparently didn't notice and just kept recording this still image of the pause screen. Riveting gameplay, I know. Fortunately, I still have my replay file. So while OBS continued recording a pause screen, I was fighting a hoglin to the south. Unfortunately, a gas decided to tip the scales against me, and I ended up dying. But I didn't lose anything important, so it's fine. I was running low on mushrooms, so I went to the grove to farm some more. This led to some fascinating thoughts. What if we built a floor out of brown mushroom blocks? I almost never see anyone build with mushrooms in survival mode. This idea still floats through my head every time I harvest mushrooms in this world. I guess if the series goes on long enough, I'll have to honor it. After stocking up on mushrooms, I delved back into the deep forest. I was mostly just trying to keep exploring because I liked the idea of building a base out here and my current one gets too small. But I also took the opportunity to do some hoglin hunting while I was here, since I'd been getting so many spectral arrows from the piglins. I also tempted fate. I'm a bit reckless, aren't I? What am I doing? I did a lot of hoglin hunting, actually. It's pretty scary, but since they hate warped fungi, you can pretty easily kite and camp them. Just be prepared to go through a lot of hunger, because those tusks are not for decoration. Sometimes you don't even have to do it yourself. Watch out for piglins and you can just steal their kills. They don't seem to mind for some reason. It's not just for food either. As you can see, I've already made some leather armor. In a normal world, leather armor is only good for style, since iron is honestly easier to get a hold of. But since iron and diamonds are both pretty rare here, gold needs to be used for bartering, chain armor is chain armor, and netherite is just no, leather armor actually becomes the most practical everyday wear. Such a shame that the one scenario where leather armor is actually useful is also the one where dyes basically don't exist. I have to say, there's some great views in the nether too. Sometimes you just have to stop to take it all in. Carefully. Oh, uh, right. I wanted to head down to the lava level, which unfortunately took me through the soul sand valley. Fighting skeletons on hard mode without a shield never gets any easier. They're honestly worse than any of the nether mobs. I mean, just look how nervously I'm looking around just to make sure there aren't any other skeletons around. And I'd like to once again thank the piglins for giving me so many arrows. Poor fella. Down at the shores, I tried to grab some gravel and ended up pouring lava on myself like an idiot. I was forced to use a fire resistance potion to survive, but that just made it easier to reach my real goal, a strider. Remember that saddle I got in the nether fortress? With a strider, I'll be able to cross lava oceans in style, which should make traveling a lot easier. Apparently OBS has been recording the wrong thing for a while. Okay, <laughs> well it's here now, I I'm on a strider. <laughs> Earlier in the session, I'd spotted a ruined portal in the ocean, so I rode straight toward it. Oh, here we go. Chest. A higher protection for golden helmet. Oh, this is potentially good stuff. Oh shit, wait, I can't mine this. That requires, uh, uh, that, that requires an iron pickaxe. 
Okay, well, good to good to know. We'll have to come back here. I guess we could wear that helmet. It does cover up my eyes a little bit. I'm thinking of retexturing the helmets so that they don't cover up the eyes on my skin. Or maybe I need to change my skin. Maybe it's me that's wrong. But I don't think so. <laughs> right now, we should be sort of below my base. So I can't help but wondering what we find if we go over here. Of course, we have that tiny little corner of Basalt Deltas. Here's that Basalt Deltas. Up there, I guess, is probably where we live. I continued to the north, which turned out to have a pretty huge lava ocean. I was hoping to find a warped forest since it was the only biome I hadn't found yet, but I wasn't having any luck. I had just given up and started navigating home when suddenly... Wait! Warped forest? We're heading in the direction towards spawn. Do we go right past this? Yeah, turns out if I had just turned left and followed the coast instead of going straight into the ocean, I would have run into this immediately. I got targeted by a ghast before I could check it out, which resulted in me attempting Striderback Archery. I will not let you kill my fucking Strider. <sighs> I'm sorry, Strider. I know you want lava. What we got here? We got warped. Yeah! Hot tourist destinations for this tiny little patch of warped forest. But where there's a little, there might be more. Okay, so the area around my house looks something like this. This ledge drops down, and the others act as walls around my base. On top of the western cliff, this is the path I take to get to the little crimson grove, and the bigger forest is further this way. This is the direction I went where I crossed the whole soul sand valley and then died when I was first looking for wood. And this is the path I just took on my strider, through this lava channel and under my base. Here's the little patch of warped forest I just found. Not only is it small, but crossing this ocean isn't very convenient. The plan is, if I break this cave wall on top of the cliff, I might find the rest of the warped forest. And since it'll be a land route, it should be much easier to get back to later on. Apologies, Sir Strider. I must imprison you temporarily. After stopping to cook up some hoglin meat, I climbed the cliff and started tunneling to the west. And it didn't take too long to find an open space. Here's hoping there's more warped forest. Reached the other side. Where the hell are we? Well, no luck so far, but I had faith. Well, maybe I just keep going. There's gotta be a, another patch of warped forest. You know what, if nothing else, I can mine some gold. <gasps> There it is. Okay, let me just grab this gold. We always need more gold. Gold, so much gold. They should have large gold veins in the nether. You know, like how there's the large iron and copper veins in the overworld? Three gold ones, but they're only in the nether. That would give you some fun things to do in the nether as well. Let you set up a proper dig site here. The train with the piglins? I'd love that. I don't know if there's anything like super important that I need from here. This is potentially an interesting location for a base. Well, we now know how to reach this, which is the important thing. If we need warped wood for any builds, we know where to come. At this point, I completely forgot where the way back was. Don't get me wrong, I knew what direction it was in, just not where. While trying to find it, though, I ended up finding something very exciting. He's gonna... Oh my god. Oh my god. <gasps> That's the only way to get Nylium. There's no Silk Touch in this dimension. <laughs> this is actually not quite true. Silk Touch does exist, but it's extremely hard to get. So for our purposes, this might as well be the only source of Nylium. There, the work one is the easy one to get because this is the biome. Like, there's literally another one right there. Thank you. And there's my house. Oh. Now that. That is all. Sir? Oh, shit. No, 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 no. 
That was... He was aiming for my house. That was personal. Oh my god. Well, I'm gonna need to find a piglin now. Because I've got 39 gold. Hang on, this isn't a stew moment. This is a pork chop moment. Oh god. Okay, that time it was me who almost blew up my house. We're fine, we're fine. It just made a little hole. That's completely fine. See? No problem. At this point, I spent a while looking for piglins to barter with, and it took exactly way too fucking long to find any. I eventually found some, and after a bit of bartering... <gasps> Soul Speed 2! That's the only enchanted book that exists. This sounds good and technically is, but I'm not going to be able to afford an anvil anytime soon, so these books are basically just for decoration. Oh, and as you can see, I'm still mining more gold, which means more bartering. Good evening. At this point, I decided to take a break, bringing an end to what had been a surprisingly relaxing recording. Hopefully the next session will be just as chill, right? Yeah. In between sessions, I actually made a few changes. For one thing, I fixed a small bug in the Nether Start data pack. Alright, check this out. Fixed it. I fixed it by changing these to be conditional. I also made a new data pack to easily turn item frames invisible. It makes this respawn anchor look extremely cool. And I also retextured Helmus to play better with my skin. Uh, maybe my break between recordings wasn't much of a break after all. Uh, anyways, I decided it was high time to sort out my storage, so I spent a while doing that. I needed more wood, and by this point I'd already clear-cut the grove, so I decided to gather more in the deep forest. Back in the crimson forest once again. One difference between trees and huge fungi is that the tops of fungi never decay, and they're not fast to break, so you're practically forced to leave floating treetops. I did eventually find one solution, though. You don't really need to remove the treetops because you can just grow new ones in the exact same place and they will not even care. I'm really curious what else we can find if we keep going here. I decided to keep exploring out further to the west, just to see what else was out here. After mining a bunch of gold, I had a ridiculously long battle with a ghast, which I'm forcing you to watch in full. Listen, you have no idea how many ghast fights I have to cut out. I have to show some of them. Eventually, it just gave up, so I guess we'll call it a draw. Oh. Oh, I thought this was a... I, I, I thought that was a, a Basalt Deltas. That's not a Basalt Deltas. <laughs> We've just stumbled upon a Bastion. Those were the days. Those were the days. Oh shit. Oh, look at all that gold! Dude. Dude, can you please stop doing this? Guys, your your bastion is being fired upon. Look at this place. I really, it looks like exactly what it should look like as well. It's like a proper wall with the bridge coming out of it. Like, this is what this structure is meant to look like. And I'm so glad the terrain generation actually accommodated it. I definitely want to get a closer look. I don't think I'm confident enough to try to sneak into this place just yet. I can't wait to check that place out in further detail. Building ideas are rushing through my mind. I'm back. Any penguins around? Of course not. Never when you want them. After getting home, I added some more item frame decorations to my house. And then I got into some trouble. I won't tolerate this behavior. Don't think for a second. Wait, what was that supposed to be? Ah, oh, shit. Apparently I got credit for that. Now they're mad at me. Oh my gosh. There's a lot of them. Ah, oh, shit. No, no, no. some gold for that, so 
was it entirely for nothing, I guess. With that resolved, I did some more bartering, which went bafflingly well. It's gonna be really slow with only one guy, but hey, that's what I got. <gasps> Soul Speed 2. That's good. Oh shit. <laughs> Soul Speed 3. Iron Nuggets! Holy shit. More Iron Boots. Soul Speed 1. I decided it was time to go on another adventure, so I used one precious iron ingot on a shield, gathered my supplies, and hopped onto my strider. Remember that part of the first video where I said, uh, Another fortress. Well, that fortress is where I'm headed. I remember that it looked like it was mostly on the ocean, so I figured going by Strider was the best idea, especially because it meant I didn't have to travel through the Soul Sand Valley. It's kind of funny how as soon as you got a Strider, the oceans of lava suddenly become the safest place to be. You know, as long as you don't press shift. Anyways, I, uh, strode? I strode east past the first fortress, and then turned north to reach the new one. While looking for a good place to break in, I also found another ruined portal, which is a nice bonus. I then broke in at the bottom, built a little dock for my strider, and dug my way up through the foundations. At last I broke through and I was inside my second fortress. This one was a little bigger than the last one, so I was hoping for some big rewards. Hello, sir. <gasps> oh my goodness! <laughs> you see this? This is quite the complex, huh? Apartment complex? Find it quite simple. I'm getting so much great stuff out of this. Oh, this is such a big fortress. Oh my god. Not every day you get melee attacked by a blaze. I'm level 25? I didn't even notice until now. What the fuck? Oh my god. More diamond horse armor, my favorite thing. I'm still grabbing it. <laughs> Who knows, maybe one day Moyang will add a way to get horses in the nether. Then I'll be the one on top. Look at all this, there's so much more to it that I haven't even visited yet because I haven't gone down here. Oh no! <gasps> oh, that's bad. There were 10 diamonds on me when I died, not to mention the gold, my shield, soul speed boots, and a fire resistance potion and all of that was now at risk of despawning. The fortress wasn't loaded in from my house, so I could theoretically take time to repair, but I wasn't 100% sure of that at the time, so I grabbed whatever I thought would help and set off on foot to get those diamonds back. As you can see, I grabbed an extra pair of soul speed boots since I knew the journey would be mostly over soul sand and I was kind of on a time pressure. The plan was to sneak past all the monsters, grab my items, collect my wits, and get out of there. It wasn't going to be easy, but five minutes is longer than it sounds, so I knew I'd have a few tries to make it happen.
I'm going to be honest with you here. This was devastating. I was seriously considering deleting everything. I mean, I hadn't even started editing the first video yet. If I just threw in the towel here, no one would ever know. Let me tell you something. This might come as a surprise given how brutal the nether start scenario seems, but I've never been very good at survival Minecraft. And while I've been seriously broadening my horizons in the game over the past few years, the one thing I've never done is played survival without keep inventory. Which is fine, of course. The best part of Minecraft is that there are no rules, and we can all enjoy it in whatever way suits us best. For me? Well, I've never been able to handle the idea of losing all my items in this game, so I always use keep inventory, because that's just a part of how I enjoy the game. For this world, though, I tried to go without. Not because it's cheating. Again, you can play Minecraft however you want. I mean, strictly speaking, invisible item frames is a cheat. I may have hidden it behind the non-cheat slash trigger, but the actual command behind the scenes is slash data, which is definitely cheating. No, the main reason I left keep inventory off is simple. Losing everything in lava felt like a core part of the nether's overall identity, and if I was going to do this gimmick, I needed to experience the nether in its true form. That night, I went for a walk. I thought about everything that had happened, the eight hours I had spent in this world, not to mention all the time I had put into making the data pack, and I wondered, what did I lose, really? I mean, the diamonds? I got those after just 12 minutes in the fortress. I already knew I'd have to raid countless fortresses for this world, so like, is losing the loot from just one of them really a big deal? Come to think of it, everything I lost could probably be replaced in a couple hours. It's not like I lost my base. So let's just cut to the chase here. Yes, I did continue playing on this world. In fact, we're totaling 23 recordings so far, with 41 hours of video between them. Remember, this video was just recordings 3 and 4. I've, uh, got a lot of editing to do. And speaking of editing, welcome to the end of the video! Come on out, background footage, get in here, Dreamland 3 music. So, uh, this sure took a while, huh? I wasn't expecting the first video to get more than, like, 5 views, so the response was absolutely amazing and a little terrifying. Unfortunately, I made the foolish mistake of uploading that video right before exam season, and then after that I was home for winter break without access to my desktop for editing, and then after that I was having some technical issues with this voiceover recording. Hopefully the next one comes faster? Well, no promises.